Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, we finished all of the material for chapter two and now I want to talk about the exercises at the end of chapter two and give you some hints and a little bit more background on what I'm trying to get you to learn from these exercises. Okay, in the previous chapter, we derived a lot of basic properties for the dot product in a coordinate-free manner, but now I want to derive similar products, similar properties for the cross product. And I'm going to allow you to use coordinates in this case. So A, B, C, and D are vectors, problem one, and we're going to express them in Cartesian coordinates, the i, j, k unit vectors. So A would be A1, i, plus A2, j, plus A3, k. And so then I want you to prove A, B, and C. So the cross product is not commutative, it's anti-commutative. A cross B is minus B cross A. That's very important. And you've seen how that occurs in, in cases. Then we have the distributive law. And I already used that when we were learning to compute cross products. And so I want you to uh, practice with it here. And you can see it's a long expression. And then a uh, expression part C, how scalars do distribute across cro cross products. And that's a very useful property to know too. Okay, problem two, I give you two concrete vectors, explicit vectors, and I ask you to compute A cross B and A dot B. Should be easy, but it's important that you verify that you can do that. Then problem C three, similarly, I give you two explicit vectors, and I ask you to determine A cross B without doing any calculations. So whenever you're given a problem that's stated like that, you know there's a trick involved. So you need to think about what does cross product mean and under what circumstances would the cross product of two vectors be zero? And then do these two vectors satisfy those circumstances? Okay, problem four is one I really like. Um, so it, um, it all concerns uh, vector expressions involving scalar multiplication, cross products, uh, division of with by scalars, and so on. So we have um, four concrete vectors: lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, lowercase d, expressed in terms of i and j. So on this page, you only see a uh, one particular expression, but uh, there's more to come. Uh, so I ask you, which expressions make sense? By that I mean, which have mathematical validity in terms of the uh, properties of vectors? So the first one clearly does, because a dot b is a scalar, and it's divided by c dot d, which is a scalar. So you can divide one scalar by the other, unless c dot d happens to be zero. But you can... You should be able to look at the vector and see that's not the case, necessarily. Okay, here's all the other expressions. Some of them are a little bit devious because uh, a dot b dot c. Well, which do you compute first? I kind of left it a little bit vague. Okay, so a dot b is a scalar, and scalars can multiply vectors. But... The way it's expressed, a dot b is a scalar, and scalars don't enter into the dot product. So this is not um, allowable. C is also a bit of an ambiguous one. Um, a dot b is a scalar, because b, b d doesn't have any meaning, so your only choice is a dot b. There is a convention that I want you to learn about this, but uh, I want you to look it up yourself and then we can discuss it. B dot C is a scalar. If it's non-zero, you can divide by it. 
Okay, fine. What about this? Can you divide by a vector? Leave that up to you. Um, so expressions like, uh, well, this is, this is interesting. A cross B is a vector, and then you can take the dot product with another vector. But if you compute B dot D first, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so you get the idea. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I have this exercise because a lot of, you know, you always have to ask yourself, does the expression you have make any sense mathematically? And this is a good way to have you look at that for vectors. Okay, problem five is basically a uh, vector, two vector and a geometry problem. So you can sort that out. Problem six. I give you two concrete vectors and I'm asking you to prove the product rule when they are represented in the Cartesian IJK coordinates. And that, that makes it, uh, that makes it, uh, uh, I, well, I believe quite doable because you do it component by, by component. And that's one of the things I want you to realize for the IJK component, IJK coordinate system. You just component by component. And, you, and each component just regular calculus and algebra and add, add everything up. Okay. So product rules B and C. Okay, seven is just a, a uh, concrete problem. Two problems do, doing integrals. Problem A is pretty straightforward. B is a little more involved. You have to do a little bit of calculus computation and you're going to what are you going to get in the end it's a dot product so you should get a scalar for b and a vector for a important to understand what the objects are once you've done operations al algebra or calculus on them problem eight i give you the components of a space curve and i ask you to compute the magnitude of the velocity and acceleration Okay, and then in 9, I give you another space curve. You might ask yourself what that is. It's a helix, and I'll leave it to you to figure that out what that means. Show that the speed of the particle increases with time, but the magnitude of the acceleration is constant. And then describe the motion of the particle geometrically. I just kind of gave that away. Okay. So those are the exercises at the end of this chapter. And next time, we're going to pick up on kinematics, space curves, and we're going to learn about uh, circular motion and line integrals, a, a great topic. So until next time, goodbye.